What's up? My name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be showing you the brand new official way to convert your worlds between different versions of Minecraft and including between Minecraft Java and Minecraft Bedrock. This was announced mid last month, which was May, so I'm a little bit late to the party, but since then things have quieted down a bit, so the website shouldn't be too delayed. Yes, this is a website, it's not something that you need to download. In the description down below, you'll find a link to chunker.app. This is the brand new tool officially from Minecraft slash Mojang slash Microsoft created by Hive Games Limited. It's a pretty awesome tool that does exactly what you'd hope it would and much, much more. To start with, I'll fire up Minecraft and show you the world that I'll be converting to Minecraft Bedrock and later on back. So over here, I've got Minecraft. I'll head into single player and my texture test world over here. I'll be converting it to Bedrock and later on back. The only caveat with using this website is that you can't have worlds that are far too big. We're talking in the gigabyte range. This is more for small slash medium sized worlds that aren't too massive. If you have chunks trailing off to thousands and thousands of chunks away, you may need to use a tool like MC Edit in order to get rid of them before you can upload it as you will need the world to be at least a little bit compressed. Anyways, over here I have my world. There's not too much going on, there's just a little house with some villages inside of it. I'll simply quit out of it to save the world, and I'll hold start and press R to bring up the run dialog. Inside of here, I'll type in percentage app data percentage backslash dot Minecraft, as you see here, and I'll click OK to open it up. Now that we're inside of our Minecraft folder, I'll head into the saves folder. Then inside of here, we have all of our different worlds. The one that I'll be converting is called texture test over here. And if we right click properties, you'll see that it's taking up about 100 megabytes, which isn't too big. But of course, considering I haven't done a lot, you could very easily reach a gigabyte in very little time. Because this is an online tool, you will be required to upload all of these files to the internet. So this will also be capped by the speed of your internet as well, especially if you're uploading larger worlds. So to begin, right click the folder over here and choose send to followed by compressed zipped folder. Then you'll see it compresses it. And when it's eventually done, we'll end up with a zip file that's a little bit smaller than the original folder itself. Here, I've saved about 30 megabytes. Awesome. I'll click at the very top to copy this path here. So I'll click in an empty space, right click, copy, and I'll head back to my browser. Then I'll choose upload archive as I have it zipped already, but we can also choose a folder over here to have our browser upload all of the different files. We can upload .zip and .mc world. The .mc world file is for bedrock. So I'll click upload archive, I'll click at the very top, paste in the path I copied, hit enter, select my zip, and choose open. Now, after clicking start upload, our world is then uploaded, and it will be processed. If you receive an error saying something went horribly wrong, disable your ad blocker and any other third-party extensions in your browser, a really quick way around this is just open up a private or incognito tab with no extensions loaded, and try to upload your world once more. There we go, 100 megabytes has been uploaded and processed. Now we can choose what we want to export the world as. We can choose a ton of different bedrock versions over here, all the way from 1.13 to 1.19. Java, we can choose 1.19 all the way down to 1.13.2, with 1.19, the latest, being currently in beta. So because this is a Java world, I can select, say, Bedrock 1.19 up here, and I can click Convert and Download on the right-hand side to simply convert and download my world in Bedrock format. However, I'll be clicking Advanced Mode instead after choosing a version to convert to, and it'll then generate a world preview giving us an overview of what exactly our world is and what we'll be converting. This could take some time, but you can head across to the other tabs in the meanwhile. The World Preview tab, when it does eventually load, is simply a preview of the world that you were in. There we go. You can see that I spawned in somewhere over here. I traveled a really, really long distance to get out of the snow, and I'm now sitting somewhere here. Here's the little house that I had, and here's the little naturally generated nether portal. Awesome. This is purely just a preview, and there's a button in the bottom right where we can change between Overworld, Nether, and The End, neither of the other two I've explored. We can head across to World Settings on the left-hand side, and we can customize our save file. Peaceful, easy, normal, hard, etc. Game mode. Generator. We can change how new chunks are generated, whether they're normal, flat, or void. Note that this doesn't wipe any data that you currently have. It simply changes how new chunks that haven't yet been explored are generated in the future. We can change the world name, seed, spawn, time, toggle experimental gameplay which is for bedrock only, bonus chest, 
nether scale, spawn mobs, etc. I'll be turning on, say, experimental gameplay, for example, and I'll head across to game rules at the very top where we can disable time progression, etc., etc., keep inventory, restrictions at the very top, we can customize these as well, weather, and finally, miscellaneous to change a bunch of things here as well. For me, I'll be leaving all of this as is, and I'll head across to Dimensions and Pruning. Inside of here, we can choose what dimension we'd like to start pruning, if any, and we can turn it on over here to simply limit how many chunks we'll be converting into our new save file. Anything that's outside of this region here, from negative 10 X and Y to positive 10 X and Y chunks, will be simply ignored and deleted in our new download. You can, of course, type in whatever you want here if you'd like to compress your world. However, I'll be leaving this off as I'm not going to do anything here. Heading across to block mapping, this is where things get pretty insane. We can choose any block in Minecraft and we can choose any block to convert it to. It's not just as crazy as that. If I choose a door, for example, I can choose a direction, hinge, open, up a block, waterlogged, etc. A ton of crazy things to do. So just for the fun of it, Let's try and convert the door. It's an oak door, I think. There we go. To say a iron door that has a hinge, is currently open, has an upper block, and is waterlogged. There we go. This should convert the door of my house if it is oak. Then finally, converter settings. You can add as many of these as you want. Converter settings. We have some other options here, but I'll simply be leaving everything as is. Finally, I'll click convert in the bottom right and we'll enter the queue for converting our world. This of course is server sided, so it's not gonna do much on your computer. It really just means that you'll have to wait for other people ahead of you to finish. And of course, depending on the size of your world, this could take longer or shorter. All we have to do now is wait for this to finish. Then we can choose download in the bottom right. And now our MC world file is downloading. Awesome. So. Opening my downloads folder, you can see it's 79 megs, not much has changed, but if we double click on it, it should open in Minecraft Bedrock. As you can see, that's exactly what's happening. There are other ways to import this as well, but simply double clicking on a world is by far the absolute simplest. There we go, logging into Minecraft Bedrock. Let me just position this a bit better. There we go, I'll head into play. And as you can see, Texture Test Creative Experimental has now been imported. There we go. I can edit the world to change different things about it, but I'll simply just head into play. We can also, inside of here, click this button on the right hand side to choose an MC World file to import. This is the other way that we can import files into Minecraft Bedrock. So clicking on Texture Test and loading the world anyway, after a short while will be dropped in and I have no idea where I was. Nice. Looking on Java here, I was at... 3,000, 14, 71, 384. Okay, so, click its enter, slash, TP, negative 30, 14, 71, 384. That did not work as expected, did it? Oh, no, there we go. I've teleported, and giving it a minute. There we go. There's my house, exactly as we had left it. These doors are something different. What on earth are these doors? These are dark oak doors. Okay, just because I'm curious, I'm gonna do the conversion again, just to see exactly what happens. Dark oak door to iron, that is door hinged, open, upper block, and waterlogged. And I'll also add a, say, one to the end of the world name here. Convert and download. Opening it once more when it's done. There we go, texture test one. All right, slash TP. There we go, we're back, and as you can see, there is water here. There are no iron doors. Okay, a little bit odd, but the conversion definitely changed something, so that's good. I think it's because I didn't pick a direction for them that something weird happened. Anyways, my house is now absolutely flooded. Let's take this from Minecraft Bedrock back to Minecraft Java. I'll save and quit my world here. Then I'll locate the world on my worlds list here, click the pen next to it, Scroll down to the very bottom here and export world. Then we can save it anywhere. I'll save it in my downloads, for example. Then I can close out of Bedrock, restart the conversion on Chunker, upload archive, head back to the folder, and this time I'll upload my texture test one MC world file that I just saved from Minecraft Bedrock. Start upload. And now you can see source version is Bedrock. I'll scroll down to Java 119, advanced mode, Let's do something fun and convert water to, say, glowstone. 
this could be terrible, actually. You know what? Let's do lava. Level, not too sure what that means. I think that's how high the lava is. I'll leave it as is. Anyways, all my water is now going to be lava, and for the fun of it, lava will become glowstone. Though I think these need to be reversed and order specific. Maybe not. We'll see if the oceans are lava, and that little obsidian nether portal behind me is glowstone as well, meaning this isn't order specific. Converter settings, everything else seems good here. I'll name it, say, texture test from bedrock. Then I'll click convert, wait for it to convert after waiting in the queue. I think this last bit is it converting different blocks because it is taking some time or maybe it's just zipping everything. There we go. Download. I'll download a zip file. And now we need to simply drop this back into our appdata.minecraft saves folder over here. So I'll open the zip and inside of it, we have a bunch of files in my saves folder here. I'll make a new folder and I'll call it, say, texture test from bedrock. I'll open it up and extract all of the files from the zip into here. There we go. I'll close the zip, which you can now delete. Looking at the worlds folder over here, I'll leave this as is. And looking inside of Minecraft Java, here's the old version of the world, but I'll save and quit. Single player. And now you can see texture test from bedrock. Creative mode cheats version 119. Everything is pretty good here. I'll play selected world. And let's see exactly the carnage of everything being turned to lava and lava to glowstone. This is probably much quicker than using a world edit because it doesn't really require much processing power. I'm not too sure about the speed of, say, MC edit or something like that. Yes, the seas have definitely turned to lava and the previous lava flows have now been turned to glowstone. Awesome. Let's head back to where we were before, where my house is. So TP, negative 3014, 7134. What has happened to my house? And there we go. The lava from the obsidian portal over here is now glowstone and my house and the ocean behind it is now lava. As you can see, some blocks are still left here. These are the blocks with different items in them. It's pretty odd that water and lava are coexisting like this. But anyways, if I fly off into the distance beyond a specific point, you should see that all the lava now becomes water. I think it's somewhere here and it's taking some time to load in because, well, when it spawns a huge chunk of water, it then has to process everything turning into obsidian on the very end of it, which could take some time. Nothing yet. Not too sure why this is taking too long. This doesn't seem right. No, there we go. I've finally reached the end of the generated chunks. There's the huge amount of obsidian all spawning in all at once. Yeah, things definitely worked exactly as I'd hoped. And it seems that that converter is not order specific at all. Awesome. So besides the world being a little bit more laggy now, probably because it's just a bit confused with everything going on at the moment, the world conversion was more than a success. This is the brand new official tool allowing you to convert your world between versions, Minecraft Java and Minecraft Bedrock. That's really about it for this quick video. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno, but here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.